Dave Rawlings Machine is our guest today. If you are a fan of Gillian Welch, you probably know her guitar playing and songwriting partner, David Rawlings. Well, the machine switches things up and puts David Rawlings out front and adds some friends from the Old Crow Medicine Show and the Punch Brothers to round things out. The Dave Rawlings Machine album is called A Friend of a Friend, and the band joins us for this version of Ruby that starts off the album and starts off our session. Let down your golden hair Where I'm standing At the bottom of your stairs Ruby Well I can see your TV on But the people there They flicker and they're gone So let down your golden hair for me Let down your golden hair for me to climb Just like an old time telegraph man well, I came here with a simple job to do Cause that news coming down the wire said Heads on fire and I'm trying to get a message through to you Oh Ruby well, you ain't lonely yet with your crystal and your Russian cigarette you heard before a good the finest tower when it hasn't got a door so let down your golden hair for me to climb let down your golden hair for me to climb just like an old time telegraph The 
Get your words on fire And I'm trying to get a message Through to you I am nigh on to speechless for that beginning. That is fantastic. That is the way the... Uh, Dave Rawlings Machines album begins that's the way our session begins as well with the, with the song Ruby I guess the question everybody and you probably talked about this a bunch um, asks is uh, yeah, I, I see you and uh, and, and Gail and Gillian Welch it's kind of a musical entity you know and, and whatever you do it's kind of what you guys do <laughs> and, and, and how is it different to kind of shift the you know the lead vocal mic over to your side well it's the nice thing has been since we started doing this and you know we made this record with a you know a good deal of sort of trepidation or at least I did I, I wasn't sure um, when we got into the recording if we were going to come up with enough material that we were sort of happy with or we felt like people might enjoy to even bother with the effort and because we were working on Gill's record at the time and didn't really want to hold that up you know didn't want to have put a bunch of time into something that was sort of a fruitless <laughs> endeavor to begin with it was it was kind of hard but um but it's been really nice since we since we finally you know decided to go ahead and pull the trigger and and put it out and then do some touring um some of the stuff that we'd thought when we were initially doing a few shows under my name before the record some of those things the positive things about that about how we played a little differently in this configuration and how the energy was different and the music was different that's been you know nothing but amplified since then yeah, you you and and Gil together are kind of like a two person rock and roll band. What what's it like to, ex, <laughs> to ex, be, uh, expand things? <laughs> um, it's it's pretty interesting. It's been a, it's been a, a um, it's just a thrill to get to play with you know the people that I've been fortunate enough to play with and tour with on this. I mean, such great musicians and people I've respected for a long time and who are in this very room looking at me as I say nice things about them. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah it. It it is a, um, I mean, it happened out, out of necessity. Honestly, you know, Gillian and I are so ingrained in our habit of like what it sounds like for the two of us to play that initially when we started trying to cut stuff for this record, we just tried to do it that way and realized that with my voice, this was a terrible idea. You know, we cut so many things that just did not work. Uh, how so? You were, you were hanging out there to... It's just, you know, I mean, if you think about the, the world of reedy male... <laughs> odd squeaky tenors in the world and you think about how those records sound there's you know it's sometimes it's good to have a little bit more around them i mean the way i said it before is you know gillian's voice has all this sort of size and beauty and detail and it's a very you know it's sort of like in my mind a lot of the times the less you put around it the more you can hear it and feel with it and my voice seems to be sort of the opposite well it's interesting because you there are some things on here that are pretty sparse with you know just in fact is you do well i hear them all was a really interesting thing i never thought i'd play a solo song and put it on record my entire life and mm. that actually was the result of three or four days of deep despair of trying to do that and thinking it was never going to work and then all of a sudden sort of finding my way with it so um so yeah but that was a sort of more intimate that again it wasn't exactly what we do you know the only thing that really got on the record that w that is was sort of that was the way we normally make records is the medley is method acting and cortez the killer and that was done pretty much the same way we would make a Gill track with us sitting across from each other and playing. The Dave Rawlings Machine are our guests today. Yeah, and that was going to be my first question because, you know, I'm, I am a David, and, and you don't, people don't call me Dave. And, and why, why, why is this the Dave Rawlings oh, Machine? Oh, well, um, I, I don't even really know. I think when, um, I think we just started, we started calling it, you know, Dave Rawlings, or we didn't know what we were going to call it, honestly. Gil was on the phone one day with Ryan Adams, and uh, and right when we were about to do a little Newport set under my name, truly only to try out some new Gillian songs without doing our whole show. I mean, that was the whole point of me playing this little Newport set. But right. at some point, about two weeks out, I realized, oh my God, I have to play a set. You know, I need to figure out what I'm going to play. And so it was on our mind, and we did a couple little warm-up shows at these strange little, like, a coffee house in Providence where you just had to write your name on the on the calendar and then you could have a date it fit maybe eight people we brought, bought a little PA on sticks and went down there and played a couple times but Gil was talking to Ryan on the phone about those gigs and she said yeah we're doing a, a couple shows under Dave's name and Ryan said whoa Dave Rawlings machine 
<laughs> there you go. And we thought, oh, that's funny. Well, now you do a song that when people will hear it the first time, they go, oh, that's Ryan Adams' song, but it's when you and Ryan rode together. Yeah. On, on the album where you have the um, the argument, the uh, yeah, heartbreaker record, yeah, 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 yeah. which was a <laughs> which was a really fun record to make. I mean, I didn't. I, I've always loved Ryan's version of it, but I've sung it over the years at Gill shows now and again. Always felt reasonably close to that song, so thought it was natural to try to give the little country honk version of it on my record. Absolutely. Now, can you can you split up who wrote what on on this? Is it is it? Uh, oh, the Ryan uh, on um. Uh, I'm trying to remember how it, it went down. It's a fuzzy night, um, <laughs> but we were sitting there. There were some other people at the house. I know that, and we were sitting in the living room, and I think Ryan started playing this thing, and I thought he was playing Prodigal Son, the sort of because it's very much like that. And he, Young boy, I started doing that, and and um, and we played that around for a little bit, and then we might have even gotten into this other, these other chords, and maybe some words got spat out to that, but I think that's about how far it went, and we might have played that around a lot. I don't remember if some words got suggested or whatever, but there was this piece of it, you know, and I loved it as we were doing it. I'm like, well, this is great. This is a really cool song we're writing. And then maybe the next day or two days later, you know, I'd been sitting around and I was playing it. And I was playing it as I could remember it the next morning with a slightly foggier head. I was like, okay, yeah, it sort of went like this. And then the next time I saw Ryan, I'm like, man, we should finish that song. And Ryan said, like, what song? <laughs> I said, that song we were writing the other day. He's like, cool, how did it go? <laughs> <laughs> So at the very least, I filtered it. And then I remember we sat down and wrote what we thought of as the sort of Morrissey part, the, ooh, the days, like that came second. We added that part. <laughs> so that's the best that I can recall of, you know, 10 years ago. Well, here's the, uh, the Dave Rawlings Machines version of To Be Young. All right, I'm going to grab my banjo.
to be young is to be sad is to be high. And Dave Rawlings machine. You know, um, this is, I've heard you talk about doing interviews when you're out with Gil and how you feel like you, you hog the space. Today you get to hog the space. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> and one thing I was really curious about is the, the two of you, um, if I'm not wrong, kind of met when you were both at Berkeley. Yes. And, and uh, Berkeley School of Music in, in Boston. Right. And I've always scratched my head about that because um, a lot of the people I meet who went to Berkeley are, are there ain't too many country people, country <laughs> musicians well, I, I meet. There weren't there. that many there when we were there, but the nice thing was the group of us that were there, and there were probably 10 or 12 people, were drawn to each other and played a lot of music with each other. You know, that was the thing that happened. I mean, and a lot of those people, um, you know, we have a friend named David Steele who's a great guitar player, and he, you know, moved to Nashville the same time we did, and he played with John Prine and with Steve Earle and, you know, has been, you know, plays with Gary Allen now and has been uh, in that business the entire time, you know, uh, and our friend Porter McClister who moved down there who was actually singing with Gil. He always had a better vocal blend than I did with Gil, I thought, and he, but he's, I mean, last we knew he was playing with Tanya Tucker. So there were a group of us, and we loved bluegrass and we loved country music, and I think sometimes it maybe meant more because there weren't a lot of people. You sort of felt like you were swimming upstream right um but actually i should i i have to mention that you know there was a gentleman named bob stanton there who had a country ensemble and bob's a great telecaster player and had studied with lenny bro and had been i think lived in nashville maybe in the late 70s or early 80s and had been barbara mandrell's like md and so he really had a deep knowledge of the stuff and helped like pass on a lot of stuff to sort hmm. of all of us it's changed a little because now I hear you can actually major on banjo. You yeah. can, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And can you, you? You could always major in like songwriting, right? Or was that you always- could at the time, and that's what Gillian was doing. I was yeah. terrified of that, you know. I, I I like signed up for a songwriting class, and then I dropped out as soon as I realized they were going to make me write a song. <laughs> now, um, Dave, you got an an amazing um, guitar style, which actually you were playing banjo on that, but it's. Not too dissimilar. Uh, I'm curious as to if there's anything at Berkeley that was helpful to kind of getting your uh, your chops together in in playing lead. Um, I guess that, I mean there must have been. I know that um, I took uh, you know guitar classes with a lot of different people there and tried to absorb as much as I could. But it always did help me to sort of know what note I was on on what chord and sort of know the you know harmony and know my way around the neck. Mm-hmm. I mean that helped me more than anything. I always had a hard time like copying what other people did. So I, I guess from the time I started playing with Gillian, that's really when I started to try to develop a guitar style. And it was all developed sort of to go in with her guitar. So I just think of it as part of her guitar sound more than anything else. Like I say, two-person rock and roll band. <laughs> Dave Rawlings, Machine, are playing live today. Um, what's next? Uh, let's uh, we'll do a pretty one here called uh, Bells of Harlem. We're very lucky to have Gabe Witcher with us today. He's going to sort of play the string part, I think. Look at the world. It's waking up. I couldn't sleep for dreaming My weary soul was finally home I had the strangest feeling This is the dawn, the break of day After the midnight part Far down the streets, 
I see the signs The crowd is breathing faster Some must have walked A hundred blocks I see the flocks and pastors Oh, what a time to be alive Tears of the past forgotten It's been a long, it's been a long and lonely night goes from one beautiful moment to another that is uh, bells of harlem um you should we should mention that uh, catch the was playing the uh, harmonica on that and and on bass today mr morgan janik who's also all over this album so yeah sounds great now you mentioned something with uh, uh with two fiddles yeah maybe we should uh we want to it's great that we have an embarrassment of riches in the fiddle department here today maybe we ought to take advantage of that um I mean, I, you know, I'm not sure if, uh, we'll have to see, we may, maybe need to start out with a couple of guitars and then maybe if we need more fiddle in the middle, we'll call for reinforcements. How's cool. that sound? Sounds good.
It's too easy finishing up our session with the Dave Rawlings machine. And thanks to uh, Dave and Gillian Welch and uh, other members of the band, including Ketch Secor from Old Crow Medicine Show.